shows that I did in the past year or so. Um, I'm sharing my screen now, hope you can all see it. <laughs> so, okay, good. Okay, so, so 2019 was really like the first year that kind of, uh, that it was kind of like a springboard to all these different subsequent shows that I've been doing since then. Um, this year has been more virtual, of course, but it all started really at the MENA Foundation Gala in April of 2019, where I know some of you attended, so, so you'll find this familiar. <laughs> um, but I really appreciated that opportunity to show my work at the gala and just um, participate in a silent auction type of event to raise money for breast cancer awareness and treatments. Uh, then there was skipping to summer of that year, our art around town in Chappaqua, New York, um, in which basically different businesses around town were hosting different artists. And so I got to put up some of my pieces on this restaurant wall um, and it just kind of brightened up the place and we had a nice little opening reception there. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and then we come to November of 2019, um, I had a, a show at the India Center of Westchester Annual Banquet. And as you can see, Nalanyanti was there supporting me as always. <laughs> um, she drove all the way after a long, long day and it just made me smile and made my day. <laughs> so then um, just the last, the, the way I ended out that year was a holiday show back in Chappaqua again. Um, and so you can see some familiar paintings and some new ones that I had um, picked up by that time. But now to get into more detail on some of my paintings. Um, like I said, I would show you some of my uh, attempts at perfectionism or <laughs> reproductions of some famous master paintings. So this one is first um, Starry Night from 1889, a reproduction of the famous post-impressionist artist Vincent van Gogh, which I'm sure many of you would recognize. Um, this masterpiece depicts the view from outside van Gogh's bedroom window. It reflects his interest in astronomy as well as his inner state of being. His sharp, swirling brushstrokes in the wind, moon, and stars signify great movement on canvas and turmoil in his mind. One can see his incredibly famous original at New York's very own Museum of Modern Art. Then we have a reproduction of Van Gogh's Sunflowers from 1889 uh, as well, the same year. And sunflowers signified gratitude to Vincent van Gogh, who made a series of 12 sunflower paintings. This one was made to give to his friend Paul Gauguin, another famous artist. As I incorporate gratitude into my daily life, this subject matter struck a chord with me. I had already painted Claude Monet's sunflowers, which you'll see next. So I chose to reproduce a different style of sunflowers, such as this one, van Gogh's. <laughs> So if you compare Van Gogh to, to Monet, they're quite different because Monet was actually a, a well-loved impressionist. Um, his sunflowers came about eight years before Van Gogh's sunflowers. And so it's a different take on it. Um, but the original is housed at the Met Museum of Art in the city, which we're privileged to have so close to us. Um, and the painting was revered by critics who were wowed by his mastery of such a traditional subject, as well as Van Gogh, whose own depictions of sunflowers, like you just saw, were to be his among his own most popular and famous works. Next, I've done a reproduction of um, Claude Monet's famous water lilies. So water lilies are the most iconic images of Impressionism, I would say. And uh, Monet painted about 250 water lilies paintings during the end of his life in Giverny, France over a period of about 25 years, which is considered among his most um, important achievements. 
This particular one is one of my favorites and I had a very peaceful time painting it. <laughs> The original sold for $54 million at Sotheby's in 2014. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I wanted to uh, break with a little quote, which was that art does not reproduce the visible, rather it makes visible. This was said by Paul Klee, um, a Swiss painter and I wanted to bring that up because not all art is about reproductions, like I was mentioning earlier. Um, some art, you actually make things from your own self visible to others. So in the process of learning about uh, you know, Monet's water lilies, I actually created another version or several versions that you'll see upcoming. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to make some of my own visions visible here. Um, so this one is called Central Park Sailboats and Water Lilies. Let me transport you to Central Park on a fine sunny afternoon in the summer. Imagine racing mini remote controlled sailboats across the glassy water. That was the scene when I went for a visit with my siblings one day. It evoked for me the water bodies that Claude Monet, the famous impressionist, painted in his home garden in Giverny, France back in the late 1800s to early 1900s. This painting is the result of my two visions of his Giverny and my Central Park. <laughs> so this is the second in the series um, of, um, of like versions of Monet's water lilies and it uses his original color scheme but I also included some of my own elements, such as Yankees pinstripes on the sailboats, <laughs> which, uh, which was actually an idea that came from another trip to the city in which the New York Yankees were playing a game that day. So I again wanted to combine the classic beauty of Monet's Impressionist style painting with my own personal experience. And uh, this scene evokes the gifts that nature keeps giving, both small and large referring to the flowers there, by the way, <laughs> both small and large flowers. So next, you can see I have a little soft spot for Central Park. So this is yet another Central Park painting. Um, it's a view from Gapstow Bridge circa 2091. So here you can see a view of skyscrapers on Fifth Avenue, like the uh, Apple Building, here, the Bergdorf Goodman Building um, and the Pierre Hotel owned by the Dodge Group. And this, this memory was of a beautiful walk through Central Park with visiting relatives, which inspired this painting. Coming across an article on SpaceX's 2018 Tesla Roadster launch, I began imagining the future when this famous car might return to Earth, they say circa 2091, and land at one of my favorite NYC spots. I felt sure that welcoming admirers would gather at that time. So I hope this painting provides some relief from the bleakness of coronavirus quarantine and a, a window into a bold imaginary future. So this is the first of a series of orchids that I, um, that I compiled over the years and to me, orchids are among the most beautiful flowers because they symbolize love, beauty, and strength. They are also quite long lasting, which makes them a wonderful gift to give or receive. In fact, I received these blue orchids as a gift from a relative and have held a special place for them in my heart ever since. Enjoy as these blue orchids light up the room with a bright, cheery composition. <laughs> we also have yellow orchids, Ode to yellow orchids with a ladybug. <laughs> um, pink orchids with another ladybug. And a blue flower with a ladybug as well. <laughs> Trying to make it a signature item there. <laughs> so Leo Tolstoy said in 1890 that to evoke in oneself a feeling one has experienced, and then by means of movements, lines, colors, sounds or forms expressed in words, 
So to transmit that feeling, this is the activity of art. That brings me to my heart to heart series, which certainly evokes some feelings and emotions. Um, I had started this series moments after having a conversation with my brother about a particularly frustrating day. He told me to paint what I was feeling as a way to release some tension. So I did. What started with anxiety on the left turned into joy in the center, followed by compassion on the right side. In anxiety, a hand clamps down on the heart, which is changed to negative emotions. In joy, happiness bubbles up from the heart and into the sky. And finally, in compassion, the heart melts into light feather-like textures, giving way to a softer emotion. Next, I have a little fun, a fun little painting that I throw, threw in there for my Harry Potter fans. This is an invisibility cloak, um, which of course gives you the power to become invisible whenever you wear it. <laughs> um, then we come to Lava Lilies Lake. A fiery landscape composed of yet again, Claude Monet's water lilies template along with my own imaginative forms of lava sculptures. This piece reflects upon erratic occurrences in the environment as a result of climate change. As wildfires increasingly burn on the west coast and glaciers melt at the North Pole, etc., we may very well soon find volcanoes erupting in otherwise placid lakes where beautiful lily pads melt over into burning lava as the world's temperature steadily increases. It's a horrid but impending future, unless humans take drastic action all around the world, particularly in the coming decade. But I know we can come together and see a light at the end of the tunnel. So the American novelist Saul Bellow said, art has something to do with the achievement of stillness in the midst of chaos. That brings me to meditating Ganeshji, who's enjoying a bit of stillness in this snowy scene. <laughs> if you look closely among these mountains, you can spot Lord Ganesh, the elephant headed Hindu God who removes obstacles, resting with his eyes gently closed on the left hand side. While he meditates, he is symbolically watched over by the trio of gods, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, AKA Shivji, his father, as represented by the Tripundra, or the circle with three bars on either side floating in the skies above. While these three gods represent three straight stages of life, namely creation, sustenance, and destruction, Ganeshji's peaceful and powerful meditation transcends all these elements of time. Then to take you into a little friend zone here, um, I present my best friend and a fat cat. <laughs> so this is switching over to a different style for any dog and cat lovers out there. Um, this golden Labrador is eager and ever ready to play ball with you. It was painted in the contemporary style of famous living artist Chuck Close, who is famous for his portraits of people done in such a way that up close, one can decipher individual cubes and spots of color, but from afar, one sees only the bigger picture. Close paints in this abstract way due to a neurological condition called prosopagnosia, or face blindness, in which he cannot recognize people's faces, even if they're familiar. In a sense, he thus memorializes faces for the sake of remembering them, whereas I, on the other hand, put a twist on his uh, subjects by portraying furry friends instead. <laughs> Night in Yellowstone. Sit back and relax as you gaze upon a sliver of the starry night sky from the multicolored valleys of Yellowstone National Park. Just don't gaze too long though, or you might fall asleep under the stars. This view was created with a method called pore painting in which one paint, paints take their own form and shape. 
Traveling around Yellowstone with my grandmother several years ago is a cherished memory that I'm glad will be kept alive by this painting. I hope you guys are ready for some tea time because here's a still life that I did. Um, imagining sitting down with a good friend, a nice hot cup of tea and some delicious eats. I, I think it sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Um, time, tea time is a time-honored tradition that lifts one up in the middle of an afternoon slump. Here I attempted to capture the precious moment in this still life with some items that I was gifted, some items that I made, and just some other things that I thought will, will fit together. <laughs> Here we have sunny sunflowers, which I just wanted to sprinkle in some more ladybugs there. So <laughs> gonna throw that in. Tales of the sea. From experience, frothy blue waves cascading over coral reefs embedded deep in the ocean floor. Perhaps you're witnessing a city of moving sculptures, or perhaps you've just witnessed an octopus's arms sweeping through the blue water as it sneaks away looking for food. Whatever you see here, you can choose to interpret your own tale. This one is Under the Bridge and Through the Birches, which was actually inspired by um, my aunt's love of birch, birch trees and also combined with my little trip to a park in Tarrytown called Patriots Park, where there's a really nice Revolutionary War era bridge. So I thought I would just capture that. <laughs> then we come to three thinkers. During a 2018 trip to Venice, Italy, a turn around the corner led to this scene. Three workers, all dressed in uniform, seemingly on a break, each engrossed in his own phone and not seeming to mind anyone else. <laughs> the man on the left somehow evoked Rodin's famous sculptor, The Thinker. It was reflective of those moments when all one wants to do is independently catch up with more important messages or scroll through social media perhaps to escape reality for a few minutes. How times have changed from when people actually talk to each other in person instead of staring at screens during breaks. In any case, each of these men appeared to be deep in thought and that was worth capturing. On the same trip to Venice, Italy, I could not help but admire the shimmering blue-green canals that serve as the primary public pathways rather than roads. With gondolas or Venetian boats around every corner, I immediately became captivated by their magical presence set against the bright and cheerfully colored buildings rising out of the water. <laughs> Imagine yourself taking a nice, sweet gondola ride with your fav favorite people. <laughs> Ah, what a feast. <laughs> I actually made this painting as a commission for a friend. And as winter approaches, she might be able to see flocks of cedar wax wings descend on these berry laden trees and hedges. These birds are known to be sociable at all seasons and it's rare to see just one alone. So I thought it gave a nice sense of community like we all have here today. <laughs> Enjoy bird watching with these beautiful creatures in their winter habitat. So Van Gogh's famous friend Paul Gauguin said, art is either a plagiarist or a revolutionary. So I wanted to give you a little depiction of today's revolutionary times in this painting called We Shall Overcome Hope and Justice. In one spiral on the left, um, it's a representation of coming down with COVID-19, the deadly coronavirus that we've all been hearing about these days. And the other represents spiraling down to social inequities. No one should want to go down either rabbit hole, but the masked bunnies convey humanity's spirit and this depiction emphasizes how mask wearing is critical and now the new norm for overcoming the pandemic. 
On the other side of things, as social unrest brings to prominence Black Lives Matter and other movements for equity, here the message is that we shall not spiral downward in either rabbit hole, but that hope and justice will light our path forward and uplift us all. We shall overcome. Next, I have um, a, a pair of paintings depicting artists at work. These are young artists. The next one is a little older, but uh, this one was inspired by some art sessions that I held for my close family friends, young twins in the summertime. They were very active learners and loved painting what they saw in front of them, or at times painting from their own whims as children do. <laughs> Here they are painting orchid flowers from observation, but they also incorporate more fun kids elements like balloons, tennis balls, and cars. <laughs> Mr. Nadi on the right side has even gone back over his painting in yellow as the orchids didn't quite float his boat. <laughs> it was interesting to see each child's individual expression and the memory still brings a smile to my face. Next, there is an, a depiction of an artist who's actually not there. So, <laughs> stuck in quarantine indoors, I was inspired by Vincent van Gogh's famous interior scene of his bedroom with a yellow chair in Arles, France, and I decided to borrow some elements of his painting style to create a portrait of an artist missing in action. Just so you know, um, traditional portraits may be of, you know, faces and shoulders and all, but it's also possible to create portraits um, that are more symbolic, which use items significant to a person, for instance. So that's what I tried to attempt here. <laughs> and um, this artist who I call MIA for missing in action, but also for Mia, her name, <laughs> um, is on break after painting all morning. Where do you think she went? Perhaps she is taking a phone call, answering the doorbell, or shopping for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Whatever you imagine her to be doing, we know that she'll soon be back in her seat, painting away to complete her work and immortalize these orchids as I have done myself. Next is a pair of four paintings that were inspired by astrophysicists in my extended family. So I'd like to take you out of this world for a brief moment again. <laughs> um, we all know that black holes are some of the most mysterious objects in the universe, long predicted, but rarely ever seen directly. We also know that it is, it is generally impossible to escape a black hole, but where there are impossibilities, we in the art world strive to see possibilities through art. <laughs> Hence my title, Escaping the Black Hole. So I hope you enjoy this look at, you know, outer space and the fantastical world there. <laughs> um, and actually, I, I used the same color scheme in this next painting, which is of blacks and blues and pinks, purples, um, like dotted with stars all over. And this one I, I called Celestial Dancers, which, which is similarly a galaxy scene. But there are wavy formations that somehow evoked dancers to me. I think it's the way they're moving and the way that they're creating all these uh, that that um, makes me see that dancers will see dance in all elements of the universe. <laughs> and I think Nalamianti will agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> have um, light over darkness. And this one I painted in celebration of Diwali, which symbolizes the victory of good over evil, knowledge over ignorance, and light over darkness, regardless of one's religion. I think light is kind of a universal metaphor for all things good and beautiful. And so with this glow, I hope 
I hope some of those beautiful things reach you as well today. <laughs> and then to conclude, we have a reflective reverie. This is a form of a symbolic self-portrait, like I also mentioned that I did with the missing artist, Mia. So as I was walking in Bryant Park in Manhattan during Christmas season one year, I came across a huge Christmas tree adorned with shiny globes, both big and small. During this season of merriment and joy, I paused for a moment to reflect on myself, both literally and figuratively, amongst the festive surroundings. In the, in the Christmas ornament, which is this great big globe here, you can also see in the background that there was a, a big spread of holiday shops up in the Bryant Park Holiday Market, which I'm sure some of you before. <laughs> and so, so it's a very, just a very festive and lovely atmosphere. And, and I thought it was interesting to be able to capture it in a slightly different way than, you know, than perhaps taking a picture of those markets themselves. So with that, I'll, I'll leave you to ponder your own reflections um, this holiday period. And that comes to a close of my exhibition. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for all your attention today. Um, and in case you want to contact me about anything or see more of my work, um, my email address is here. And my Instagram account is listed as well as um, a website where my work is currently up for sale, which is through the MENA Foundation, um, which is where it all started, if you remember. <laughs> um, so the website is right here um, if ca in case you're interested in get going back and getting another glimpse of my work again. So if you, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, or reach me in those ways. And, and um, Thank you again. <laughs> I'll bring it back to Nalaniyanti. Hi. That was amazing. That was just so amazing. I was just blown away <laughs> by what you did. <laughs> uh, that there's such a variety, such a variety, Sonika. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I also saw a kind of growth where you were getting more and more reflective and going more within and just boldly seeing what you saw inside and putting it out. Yes. And, uh, it was... <laughs> Did you find it uh, uh, when, you, when you changed from one kind of uh, painting to the other, like when you went to the contemporary, was the changeover an easy transition for you or was it different? That's a great question. Um, I actually think it was pretty different. It was a different kind of frame of mind of, of making things. And like if, if I'm making something that's a reproduction, for instance, it's much simpler because I have it right in front of me. And, you know, I can just look at each square inch perhaps and like then copy it over and look at it okay. again and copy it again. But yeah. Um, yeah, with something like the bunnies or more contemporary things, it, it was more conceptual, so it just kind of needed more of my right and like kind of just think about like what colors I can associate with what feelings and that kind of thing. <laughs> I also found it interesting the way you somehow brought movement in. A lot of your painting had movement. Yeah, so I'm it's glad. A, a suggestion of movement. And I also saw that in the beginning, there was a lot of flowing water a lot of skies, flowing water, nature. Right. It, seems, it, does seem, it comes in and out of the painting. There were less of people. Yes, you're right. You're right. Um, somehow I, I haven't gotten much courage to try painting people because I feel like there's so much more to it. Um, and, and I don't, you know, it's like important to be able to portray them well and very like accurately in, in some sense. <laughs> I, I wonder if that's the only thing. I was um, uh, been going to these virtual exhibitions in Hammond and I find that 
most most artists who, who are there whom I've seen uh, appear to you uh, go to nature. There may be something innate in a painter or an artist that they find an inspiration in nature. Right. Perhaps may not be just, uh, you know, uh, just that people thing. I suppose it's something very common to a lot of artists. You're right. Um, and yeah, I think somehow I find nature comforting. And I think, you know, I've, I've, I was always kind of a shy person. So maybe I'm not as good with meeting people, but I- No, I, you're wonderful. You're perfect as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, thank you, Auntie. That, that's true. <laughs> perfect in every way. I, I just found it fascinating the range you had, the way you went uh, from uh, Monet and then you went to Van Gogh and then you said, okay, this is me, Sonika. And then there you were in the, you know, in the space and uh, exploring the starry night. And it, it was just a beautiful journey. I could see you evolve and uh, saying, okay, these are the great masters. I can learn these techniques from them. And then you started evolving your own too. Right, exactly. That I'm so glad you recognized that because um, that was that was kind of the journey that I felt I was going on also. And starting out with just concrete things that are already there and then slowly coming into looking within. And, and I think this whole period of, the quarantine, quarantining or lockdown, whatever you want to call it, like I know. definitely helped look within. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, isn't that so? We've all started looking more within us, haven't we? Yes. And 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 I can see this had a beautiful transformative uh, outpouring, right? Yeah. Things to. Thankful for that. <laughs> I'm sure everyone out here, a lot, a lot of people might want to. May, may have questions. If you'd like to uh, ask questions, should we open it up? Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I, I see uh, some familiar faces too. And um, uh, Alni, maybe um, have people put the questions on chat and then you can take one question at a time. Thanks, Veena. I can always depend on Veena. No, nope, just a teacher in me comes through. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, Sonika, I want to introduce you to uh, Marnie here. Oh, hi. We worked together in the recent elections. Oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> see. Uh, there's, uh, any, any questions, you can raise your hand in the traditional way. Uh, <laughs> which we teachers also recognize, or you can put it in the chat, in the new way. And uh, it, this is, um, let's see, do I see anyone anything there? I don't see anything there. I think you've left us speechless maybe. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, because there's um, uh, we're just digesting uh, the whole um, thing, the beauty yeah. of it, because I think this is one of those things you could just sit in front of a painting for some time and see what it means to you, right? It may mean something different to you as a painter, but something different to the viewer sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's... Uh, that's one thing I saw when you did the yellow stone. It took me at once back to um, uh, a time when my family and I went camping there, uh, camping uh, in the West Coast. And there was a particular night when uh, I, my, someone suggested that we have to get up at 3, 3 a.m. and see the stars. I said, no, I'm not doing it. So they said, okay, and we put the tent down and pinned it down. And then a storm came. And it blew away the tent, guess at what time, at 3 a.m. <laughs> we were like double down in laughter, trying to hold the tent down and looking at the stars. <laughs> so that when you showed that uh, at once, it triggered that memory for me of that wonderful moment when Hari, me and Seish were there shivering in the cold, holding a tent down and <laughs> looking at the stars. So, <laughs> 
Hey, what, you're so right about it being, um, it triggering something, bringing something out, the rasa, right? And yeah. connecting us. <laughs> That's Janika. what art is about, right? Uh, bringing memories, uh, you can, uh, something triggers there and then all of a sudden you are transported to any place on earth and in any given time. So that's what, I see a question here by Alka, uh, Alka Shrikande. Alka Shrikande is uh, the founder of Mena, Found, I mean, yeah, Mena Foundation uh, and they do breast uh, uh, funding for breast cancer, and that's where Sonika has been involved also. So Alka is asking, how does how long does it take to paint a picture? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it really varies depending on which one you're doing, like how detailed it is, how big it is. Of course. Um, but say, like on average, I probably spend maybe sixteen to twenty four hours on the painting like split up in, in chunks of time, of course, not, not all in one go, <laughs> um, but definitely takes chunks of time. And um, I'm sure we're talking for maybe five or six hours a day, you could say. Um, but it, again, it all varies um, based on my other commitments for that time and like uh, how much of a flow I can kind of get into. So, so yeah. That's about There's a question, what are your plans for the future? What kind of paintings to expect from Sue? Okay, thanks for the question, Sue. Um, so that's also a good question. Um, I am actually hoping to continue painting regularly, um, but I'm at the same time looking out for some, for some jobs in like arts administration type of roles, which is in my college background. But yeah, I'm hoping to continue painting and um, make more like, you know, things that I see around me. So um, still lifes or um, make nature related items like Melanie you mentioned or, um, but along with that more conceptual things too. So um, things maybe reflecting the current state of affairs in the world. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be open to new topics. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing what I can come up with. <laughs> Veena had a question. Do you, did you use pouring painting for the black hole paintings? Yeah, Veena Auntie, I did. <laughs> you recognize it. <laughs> I want to know about what are pouring painting because mm -hmm. I am ignorant there. Sure, sure. No, it's, it's kind of, I think a more recent technique that has come up no, and become very uh, And basically, is something where you layer different colors of paint um, in in a cup or another large container, and you basically can flip it over onto the canvas and then let the paint like spread out by itself. Um, so it kind of just fills out and takes its own design and its own shapes. Um, so that's, so it's been a fun way to paint. Um, it's a lot more hands-on and it's a lot more messy, <laughs> um, but, but it's a lot of fun. Kalpana had a question. She raised a hand. Yes, Kalpana D. Hi, Sonika. Wonderful job. So <laughs> many different uh, um, paintings and such a breadth of knowledge and uh, different yeah. aspects and subjects. I was uh, really amazed. Oh, thank you so much. There's so much to uh, absorb in each painting as you went on uh, from one to the other. I was thinking, oh, we should have to actually stay there and stare at it and get so much information. So I have uh, different questions for uh, various paintings. Uh, oh. One of the questions was, I really loved the three thinkers painting that you have. Uh, and it must have been a snapshot of a moment when you saw that, right? Did you take a picture and then painted it? Or how did you remember their faces and it, uh, the posture and everything has come out so nicely in there? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I definitely uh, needed to paint from a picture. <laughs> so I did, I did have a, a photograph of it. Um, I otherwise find it would be very difficult to remember like strangers' faces just from seeing them for a certain, like, 
experience. And so, uh, yeah, so I definitely used a picture as a reference. Um, and then just, I think I kind of changed some of the, um, well, it's, it's actually behind me right yeah. now. Yeah, I see that, yeah. I added a, a few more like circular items in there to add some texture and- Uh-huh, so like- Yeah, for the most part, it's pretty much according to the picture, so. Nice, yeah, <laughs> very nice. I also loved the bird, uh, that feast painting yes. that you commissioned to your friend. Actually, yes. when I saw that, I, I was just telling Apurva, oh, I would get that. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll have to talk to you and see. Maybe we can commission another painting or something. But we would like to take a look at the, the ones that you have too in more uh, detail. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we can that, talk. That seems, seems to be an amazing uh, growth uh, as an artist. Not just growth, rate of growth. Oh, thank you, Uncle. I really appreciate it. <laughs> How much time do you spend a day on, in painting? Um, good question. Like, I try to, once I get in, into the rhythm, I can try to go up to like eight hours or so. Um, uh -huh. But wow. it's a very good day. Like, otherwise, I think, I, I think my time span is like two hours at a time. And then take a break and then come back, do another couple of hours, take a break, <laughs> do another couple perhaps. Um, oh, artist, right? Like everybody, uh, Nalini, Auntie, you, Apurva, I've seen all these guys. And you get into moods, <laughs> you three working on it, and uh, uh, I think you get the effect. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you just keep at it and keep practicing. That's that's what we learn from Bharatanatyam, right? Lots of practice, practice, practice. <laughs> we can apply it to singing and to art as well. So definitely, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations, wonderful. There's another, another question from Marion. Marion, Marnie, maybe. Do you find yourself guided more by your feelings in the moment when you paint or by a scene that has captured your attention? Oh, that's interesting to think about. Um, I would say up until now, I've more, I've lent, been leaning more towards happening scenes and um, but more recently, I've you know was trying to express the um, emotions of like the we shall overcome painting, which involves more of the spiraling downward feeling of coronavirus or like spiraling downward into racism and other inequities going on in the world today. So, um, so I think it's kind of a mixture of both, but I'm hoping to expand on, on all of it. So <laughs> thanks for your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any um, more questions or comments, please feel free. To unmute yourself. Harry, Harry has um, a question. I, I love this exhi exhibit. Um, I was just wondering that uh, the painting about the end of the tunnel, the light at the, the end of the tunnel, uh -huh. it, it reminded me a lot of, um, uh, like that a lot of, and it reminded me of, of, you know, if you take the six line down to the, down, it goes to, uh, to, city, to city hall. And if you stay on the train, then yeah. you can see the old city hall station. And uh -huh. it's reminding me of like the light that's at the end of like the end of like you can see the whole chandelier and like coming through the chandelier at the end of like the tunnel there over there. Oh, wow. It just reminded me a lot of that. <laughs> that's great. I love that association. Um, I actually have like once taken the all the way down to City Hall as well. So, so I think I have a feeling for what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I, have you ever taken, have you ever, like, uh, like have you ever, um, so like, they, they tell you to get off the of City Hall and there's somebody that makes you, that makes you get off. But if you don't, if you don't get off, uh, <laughs> then, um, <laughs> um, then uh, like it's very noisy uh, because the trains are turning around. It's like they're going from downtown to uptown, but uh, if you stay if you stay on the train, um, it, there's like you can see the old city hall station from 1900. 
Oh. Uh, I mean, it's not this COVID, but. Uh. I loved your um, I loved your Ganesha painting so much. The way that the uh, and the octopus painting, like the paintings that you had, that you could kind of see like a double, I guess, like image. I don't know how to describe it, but it was just so beautiful. How like the the chunk of the Ganesha became like the mountains as well, and. Um, and, and then and like the like the tr that the ice was also like the top of the that was just so incredible and the one with the octopus the octopus and the that was just I I loved the how you could see these uh, double um, like how one image one image wasn't just an image but it evoked like many different I guess like a lot of different imagery I thought that was beautiful yes, yes. very nice interpretation Maya very very nice. You know how to interpret through dance, and here now you're looking at uh, visual arts. Yeah, I think that was one of my favorites too. I liked all the paintings. Uh, that one, uh, it just felt so, uh, it was like suddenly, okay, this is how Sonika <laughs> looks at the mountains. I love the, um, the emotion one, the, the one with the anxiety and the joy and the compassion. Mm -hmm. um, I could feel like the emotions when I saw each one, like the anxiety and the, like the, the way, like, I mean, that is what anxiety feels like, like a hand, like, I guess, like, well, yeah, that, that really brought that. And then the compassion, the, uh, the softness in that and the joy, the bubbling and the, that feeling of uh, energy as well. And um, I, I just loved your depiction of that. It brought out those emotions in me as well. I'm so glad to hear that. That really means a lot. Just Means I'm doing my job as a other people. Yeah, I like the way it went into hope. Yeah, it was very nice. Oh yeah. yeah. In that, in the three uh, heart one, compassion, compassion, mm -hmm. because that creates hope too. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. So Maya, besides the Kaneshi, you mentioned the octopus painting, uh, that the title of that is Tales of the Sea. And I see a comment from Bhavna. I think that's the one she got. <laughs> so, so Sonika was happy to find a new home for that painting. <laughs> Thanks, Bhavna. Bhavna for buying it. Yes, I think um, uh, what is interesting is that um, you took something which was old, like in the older techniques and saw something new in the Central Park ones. I love the fun in it, the yes. sailboats. <laughs> there, was such a, the Yankee strike. there was such a sense of fun in it too. Yeah. I oh. like that. <laughs> because when I go to Central Park, that's the feeling I get when I go by that uh, body of water. Yeah. And because it's the children and the people biking and then there's the ducks and Exactly, right? all sorts of things. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I feel like I could see your sense of humor also in the paintings as well. Yeah. Like, like you know, like this is like subtle sense of humor also coming in, which I thought mm -hmm. I really, I really enjoyed that. Too. Even with the car flying down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I like the bunnies too. <laughs> Yeah, and also the double thing, right? The rabbit hole and the bunny. Yeah, that yeah, was really it has, cool. There's so a much, good take so on depth. the language as well as the. Yeah. Yeah, I think you get a little like lighthearted and whimsical, so it doesn't seem so heavy when we think about. <laughs> um, what What do you feel when you're in New York City? In New York City. Yeah. Good question. I mean, sometimes it's. It starts with like wonderment and awe, I think, with like how big and vast the city can be. <laughs> um, but also, um, I don't know, I think I kind of like the openness of Central Park, just the vast uh, greenery there in the mi middle of all this kind of concrete hustle and bustle. So sometimes I'm not too fond of all that hustle and bustle, but, <laughs> but I think you can find like little pockets of an oasis here and there. So, um, yeah, I love finding those. <laughs> I, really, I really like the Central Park paintings a lot. Thank you, Harry. Thank you so much. <laughs>
So Sonica, I, I joined the, I, I got a little late joining this, um, this meeting. So perhaps you've already, somebody has already asked this question, but what kind of a style of painting is this? Is this your own unique style or is it, is it called something? Um, the, your, your like this is not a realistic style of painting, right? That like, um, I, I don't know too much about uh, <laughs> art, but um, you know, you have the sur uh, uh, surrealists, so you have the original, you know, like w that paintings that actually look like exactly like the object, whatever it is that you're painting, yes. right? And so this is, this is somewhere in between, I think, right? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I, I think, I don't know, I think I have a little bit of like hints of different periods here and there in my, in all of my work. Um, I definitely did start out studying a lot about impressionism to, to mm -hmm. be so, so I think some of my works have that sort of influence behind them. Um, but, but these days I'm trying to be more contemporary as well, like with, uh, with the bunnies painting and, um, and like with the, the poor painting of the galaxy and all. I, mm -hmm. I mean, the technique is called poor painting, but I'm not sure if it belongs to a certain movement as of yet. So, so I'm still learning, you know, what falls into what category. <laughs> so how many paintings have you, have you, do you have in your repertoire so far? Like hundreds or are we talking about 50? <laughs> yeah, maybe closer to 50, I would say, maybe. Mm -hmm. 50 or so. <laughs> um, not not quite as many as like Monet's water lilies, which he did like 250. So, yeah. Uh -huh. but yeah, I'm, I'm working on building it up. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I have something to say. I love that. Uh, I love the Italy one right behind you. It's, uh, it's very pretty. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, the, yeah. with the boat, the gondola. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, with the gondola. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sodika, I have a question also. Yeah, hi, Vinanti. <laughs> uh, back to the poor painting. I saw in the poor painting, did you enhance it with your own painting as well? Did you put in your own? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you have a great eye. Oh my gosh. I, I loved it. I loved the black hole one. It was really very beautifully done. The one with the sphere in it. Yeah. Uh, so, it's yeah, very both had spheres, which I, I like, just to, by association, like assume that there are some kind of planets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, they could be any kind of um, celestial body, who knows. Um, but yeah, the one with the black hole specifically, um, I also just made a few enhancements in with the black hole itself. Um, Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Donika, the one which came after that, the one, uh, there were two of them very similar. That one too, you had the pouring technique in the second yeah. one too, Thank with you. the enhancements. Yeah, yeah. There was, that... there was grays and uh, reds and blues and black. Exactly, yep, yep. And Since. that one was, that one was Since. a much, much bigger one. It was like 24 inches by 30 inches. Um, and uh, so I was able to get the pouring uh, to cover the, that whole canvas. But then after that, um, I had to let it dry for a couple of days. And then and uh, then I was able to go back and work within that sphere to make it highlighted and uh, like with white on one side and black on the bottom so that it would look like more spherical. <laughs> so that's, that's so maybe that's uh, Celestial Dancers. That's the title, which... Um... So Nika saw dancers in that painting. <laughs> Do you cover some part of the canvas so that it doesn't pour everywhere or you just let it go where it wants to? Um, so in one of, yeah, in these four paintings with, of the galaxies, I did make a little stencil for the sphere part so that the um, paint wouldn't go around or wouldn't go into those and it would just stick around the stencil, um, but not always. Like there are also other paintings, um, actually like the Diwali candles um, on this side that I did, that was a base coat of just pure pore painting. Um, and then I had let it dry and then I painted the candles on top 
of that layer. So it, it can go without stencils, with stencils, like you can manipulate it some, sometimes. <laughs> Are there any other questions, anybody? <laughs> or we can maybe wrap can it up. Can you also do this digitally? I found that a lot of artists paint and do artwork and then they combine it with some digital work to present it. Oh, yeah. So I, I have actually done some digital artwork and um, it's actually been more about like graphic design rather than like illustrative artwork. So it's, um, I, I don't know, I had, I wish I would, I wish I could have like kept up with that a little more, but I think I've left that behind a little. <laughs> so you never know, maybe I can pick it up again uh, sometime soon, um, but it's definitely a growing field out there. So I know that's, um, it's, it would be a good thing to get into. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, everybody, so much for the I'd like to thank everyone, all friends and family who joined us and um, supported Sonika. This is, it means a lot to her and it means a lot to us. And I'd like to thank so uh, Nalini for hosting this. This is such a wonderful, wonderful event. And it's great to see Auntie G and Shesh and uh, Maya and Hari, all of you. Thank you so much. Sonika has a few words. I want to say that I'm so happy that you were part of uh, this uh, Ananya series. And it's, it's such a wonderful journey today to artwork. It just stilled my mind and made me feel very peaceful and happy just to explore the art with you. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So much more of this. And I want to thank each one of you for um, coming to the virtual exhibition. This is a, a beautiful evening together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Nika, we are proud of wish you. Wish you all the very best, oh, Sonika. Just joined. Hi, I, I just, you know, I couldn't join earlier. We just ended our meeting at six, and I said, let me try. We are so proud of you. I had to come home to see this, these paintings. But I think you were the one who started her Good job, baby. Right? Yeah, but just give her a hug from us. It's, it's so good to see. Big hug. We are proud of you, Sonika. <laughs> Good job, Sonika. Thank Good you. job. Take care. Great job, Sony. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. Thank you, Sandhya. Very well said. Very well. Thank you, Sonika, well. 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 for coming. Love the great work. Very you proud of you. And Nalini, thank you. Great to see the whole family. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Anshu. Anshu, it's great to see you from. Uh, Pittsburgh and Jaya and Anjali, it's great to see all of you. Um, thank you, Sue. It was nice to see you. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bhaiya. Bye, Seema. Bye, Raji. Great presentation. Bye, Nalini. Again. Thank you. Bye, Veena. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye, Alka. Bye, bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Rashi. Bye, Sunika. Bye, Nalini. Thank Bye, you. Nina. <laughs> Bye. Care. Bye, Nalini. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye, Kalpana. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye, Alka. Bye, Alka. Thanks for joining in. Oh, it was a pleasure. That's good. That's, good. That's absolutely fantastic. So Nalini Alka is the one who uh, started Sonika Bharti and Alka. They brought her in at Nana Foundation last year. And that's where the, the fundraising sale is going on right now uh, because they, didn't, they couldn't have the banquet in person. So. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays.
Okay. Bye. 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 Safe. And uh, it's a fun evening, Sonika. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm also enjoyed it, you know. Yeah. That's so nice to see her, Auntie G. Very, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and also at your birthday, you met Nina. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 of course. And, um, that was a special event yeah. uh, in Royal Palace. Yes. That's right. And over the years in many arangetrams and events, yes. we've been here. It's so nice to see Hari. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. When we first met, um, I just found that I was pregnant with them. I know. <laughs> I know. We we came to you in December, and 